Yeah, I think it's probably appropriate that I introduce Christine because she is my wife. Yay. And uh, she has been working as a school teacher. And then she, as she said, she graduated herself uh, from working with children to working with senior citizens and um, being a personal assistant and a caregiver, uh, as a, a professional caregiver, and has really been able to take that information and put together material to help people deal with, she calls it the aspects of aging. And many of us get prepared around retirement accounts and estate planning and all of these kind of uh, physical things. Uh, but what she's really working with, and I'll let her explain it, but it's dealing with and preparing for the emotions and relationships of getting older. And she's just launched her website, the aging better network.com. And I think that's in the chat, but uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Christine for our teaching time. This is a privilege today, and I am not going to waste your time. So I've got my timer going <laughs> to keep me mindful. Do you realize this is your silver anniversary, Scott and Alan, because it's your 25th month. And I see, yeah, DJ is clapping the silver fox. And I see her clapping. So yay, that is what a privilege to talk today. Today is also in the United States National Caregivers Day. And arbitrarily, my husband said, well, why don't you talk this month? And then, of course, Sam had his 29th birthday recently, yes? Well, I'm going to have my 62nd birthday tomorrow. So I'm just, it's just all celebrating. And at uh, about four hours from now, Seth Rogen, you might know that name. His wife is Lauren, Lauren Rogan, and they are putting on the care con. So it is for caregivers because of her father, who was a caregiver for her mother. And so this is the second year that they're putting this on. That's happening just a few hours from now. And they have people that we watch on TV, like Amy Poehler in uh, Parks and Rec. And they also have people that I've met on LinkedIn because my husband has gently pushed me, the analog woman, into the digital world. So I have met people like Judy Cornish, who um, put together the Dawn method for approaching people with dementia and caring for them and understanding them. So she is a panelist on this national stage in just a few hours. And also Elizabeth Miller, the happy, healthy caregiver. She goes, I'm not always happy and I'm not always healthy. She was telling me in a chat this week, but um, she has been an ambassador for No Barriers, for which is um, a group that um, organizes outdoor opportunities for people who are caregiving and no barriers having to do with if you're caring for someone who needs accommodations, they accommodate everything. And so um, they, she is doing um, something about worry warts. Um, she's doing uh, a, a workshop. She's doing a workshop also on this national stage. So it's like this total celebration day, but it is also, I'm very aware that each and every one of those celebrities and those workers have either um, been recipients because they are maybe dealing with dementia or they have um, physical conditions that require caregivers or they have been caregiving. And so I realized the gravity <clears throat> of this, this situation as well. 
So I see that I am three and a half minutes in, and I want to tell you, and Sharla knows this person. So Sharla and I have a friend named Sherry. And when Sherry said, tell me about what it is you're trying to do. At the end, she leaned across her kitchen table and she said, but Christine, nobody wants to think about when they are very, very old, when they become very, very vulnerable, when they are in a situation of accepting assistance. No one wants to think about that. And my husband challenged me to come up with an avatar. Apparently you people in the business world do this. So I was supposed to come up with this um, person that I'm trying to approach with my product. And so I thought of the guy who actually has his hand on his golf clubs and he is ready to go. And there's someone who, whose voice changes and says, we need to talk. Oh, and, and he's just like, you know what? I, I'm retired and I just really don't want to think that far into the future. So I've been working to develop a way to reach my avatar with, if you talk about it now, then it's already a common conversation topic when that aspect of aging, that challenge, uh, the common challenges, very general challenges that come with entering maybe your 80s or 90s or 100s, when those come, it's already been a topic of conversation. Now, I just love it that Sam joined us today. I don't know him, but I already feel like I know him because of the cards that he was showing talking with grandpa. And then also David Brown, who's here today. He heard my interview with Alan and Kelly, who are both on the screen. And and David said, and I won't, I won't say it because it was private, but he was saying about having a conversation with someone and that maybe that could help. And so I've been working on, um, there's a section in a journal and that was Nancy May, who is often on the screen. Nancy May said, you need to do it like a journal. And I also wanted to think about my avatar as being a person who doesn't want to think hypothetically that maybe 30 years from now, I'm gonna need to get somebody to listen to me or get someone to stop talking to me as if I'm not capable anymore because I'm older. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of that person, I'm going, if I give some examples of answers, like just a ready answer to that particular kind of challenge, that that would kind of get the, the flywheel going. So I've come up with, you know, seven points that are the most uncomfortable to talk about a particular challenge of aging. And then After that comes five points that kind of gets you going again and and makes you feel like I can conquer this or, you know, I've got an answer for that. Now can I go golf? So um, and then after that, I call it the five C's. And my husband said one day, he goes, you know, maybe they should start with the five C's. And I think that I need to put just a little paragraph at the beginning of that journal saying, you can start on any page. There are dozens and dozens of different general, common, typical challenges that are going to come your way or are going to touch somebody that's near you. And so just flip to one that piques your interest or that you think, I don't know anything about that. So I'll just look through. And then I give them the answer key. Like, You could choose that answer if one doesn't pop into your mind and go ahead and jot that down. So that's the way the journal goes. The five C's are 
clock it and calendar it and critique it. And there's a couple of others. And it's just having to do with, did you do something about it? The three things are, did you communicate with someone about your wishes or your preferences? And did you document it? So someone doesn't have to think, I don't know, what did, what did they say about that? In case you're really not able to give a, a clear answer for yourself. Now, one of the people who's also on the screen today is Nicola, and she is in the UK. Whoever said they were, ha they were traveling to the UK, she is there. And um, she said, you need to let people know that this isn't about end of life. And there's really only one aspect in my whole journal that's about end of life, and that is just approaching the subject. Of, of talking about it, because those things are so well covered in other materials and uh, by, you know, local organizations. But the rest of it is really about how you plan to live and being very intentional about your best well, I, I usually I shy away from superlatives because there's always going to be another best that comes through, but your better um, outcomes that you imagine or that you would want or that you've seen someone else do. It's like, boy, they handled that so well when they came to that point. They just, it, it's like they already had it planned ahead of time. Likely they had talked about it when that aspect of aging happened to someone near them. And they said, just like my own mother, if I get to be that way, I just want you to know right now, and then it's up to me to remember it up here. So with the journal, you've got something written down and especially going back and revisiting it on whatever date or time of year that you choose to revisit all of these decisions because you've written down a person that you want to talk with. So I am apparently overtime now. Is that correct? We can, uh, we can kind of wind it down and open up for some questions. And I just wanted to say, yes, that, uh, that's exactly uh, uh, about a couple of the things, uh, a couple of these aspects. And uh, when we're talking about the aspects of aging, uh, we have a friend that her husband just passed away. So at uh, 52 years old, she has to deal with an aspect of aging, which is spending a lot of time alone. So she comes home from work. There's nobody there. Um, I, over this last year, lost two friends. And uh, so because uh, I'm celebrating my uh, 30th anniversary of my 30th birthday. So I just turned 60 and I'm experiencing the loss of two longtime friends. So these are the types of aspects uh, that Christine is helping us deal with. So go ahead and wind it down and open up for questions. I see Andrea has got her finger ready. Yes. Um, thanks very much for that. Can you all hear me well? Yes, you're perfect. Okay, great, great. Thanks very much for that, Christine. I had a question, um, and a lot of what you said resonated, and also what you said, uh, Scott, regarding losing friends. The same thing has happened to me. Uh, people who passed away much prematurely, and of course, parents as well. Um, but Christine, I was wondering, the focus of your work is that going to be primarily aging in Western society, which has unique aspects to it, versus perhaps aging in different cultures or are the concepts you're trying to get across and perhaps you are more universal concepts of thinking about where you are in life right now where you want to be later on i love that because we are so international now i know that some of these will make perfect sense to me but maybe in Another culture will be like, why do you even have to do that? Like with Sam's cards, it's like, why do you have to tell people to converse about things? Scott and I, we only went, you know, less than 2000 miles away down to Mexico. And it was traditional in Tepic Nayarit to leave your homes 
during the evening and go eat <clears throat> at the carts, at the outdoor carts, and just converse and know who your neighbor is and know how they're doing and how, you know, has that grandbaby been born yet and, and not eating in your home. And so for us, you know, it is a big deal to just branch out and just know even that somebody down the street is caring for someone in their home, you know, and that they're, they're in a different phase of life than we are right now. So I would say that I am, I'm only an expert in what I have experienced as a caregiver. I have done some amount of care, either voluntary, or I've been like in the private home 12 hours a day for maybe a hundred different people and only in two counties. So that mine is going to be from my standpoint, but I'm trying to make them as general as possible so that it would, it would make sense to someone else. My Aging Better Network, which is the website, is going to be very informational just to let people know there's an organization that helps you think that through. I had no idea because I didn't need to know until now. 